close your eyes and get in touch with your breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. Make up your mind you're going to stay here. And of course, part of the mind will go off. As I said last night, this is why it's good to think of the mind as a committee. You've had lots of decisions in the past, and they get lodged away as different voices in your mind. So this is a good way to find happiness. How about this? Or how about that? Wouldn't this be more interesting? Wouldn't this be more entertaining? But now's the time to say no. You've got serious work to do here. Training the mind to be mindful, in other words, to remember to stay in mind and to be alert, to watch what's actually going on. And then the third quality is what the Buddha calls ardency, is you want to do this well. Because it's when the mind is still that it can see itself. If it's running around, it can't see anything. It's like running past a tree. If someone were then to ask you how many leaves are there in the tree or how many animals or birds were in the tree, you wouldn't be able to answer. Everything was just a blur. You maybe saw a few details as you went past, but it's much better to stand still and watch. That's when you see things clearly. Because all these different members of the committee are pulling off in different directions. And when you go with them, everything else becomes a blur. Or to use another analogy, it's like going to a theater, and instead of sitting in the audience watching the play, you go behind the scenes to see how is this play put on. And you see right through the artifice. You don't get fooled by these people who say, I'm King Charles or I'm King whatever. And that way you're more in command of the mind, because you see the processes. So try to stay right here and watch. And try to have a sense of well-being with the breath, because that makes it a lot easier to watch and to stick with it. It's in this way that we get control of the mind. When you have control of the mind, then you have to control the rest of your life, because all your actions come out of your mind. And it's your actions that determine an awful lot with how you're going to experience things. So you want them to come from a good place. You want to examine the different committee members to see who's behind which decisions. You learn to recognize the ones you can trust from the ones you can't trust. And staying with the breath, settling down with the breath, puts you in a good position to do that. It's like appointing someone a judge. You put them in a good place where they can see all sides of an issue and are in a much better position to decide what's right and what's wrong than the people who are totally involved. And you want the judge to be comfortable so he doesn't take bribes. So in the same way, you want your judge inside to be comfortable with the breath. It doesn't get bribed by the different committee members. And then it can see the mind for what it is and choose the good side and say no to the bad side with a lot more success. So the happiness you look for it really is good for you. Happiness in the long term doesn't harm you, doesn't harm anybody else. That's what we're going for. It all starts by developing these basic qualities—mindfulness, alertness, and ardency right here with the breath.